towering 417 foot shot. There's a line drive down the left field line. And this one is out of here. Just got out a laser. He hit your one iron, Jim Palmer. The laser. That's oh. hit well. DJ Stewart. Whoa. He hardly left the box. He oh. knew he got all of oh, that. It was one. that a long way. Noah, who had given up three home runs total in his first four starts, has given up four already this afternoon. And now he hits Michael Franco, who is not pleased. And Man uh, I hope Manoa's saying I didn't mean it. And. Now the benches are going to clear. I mean Manoa you know his back was to us so we couldn't see what his face looked like. Or what Brandon Hyde trying to hold his guys back. Now here come the bullpen. Well, you know, you just field. don't want guys getting uh, suspended. That's all. Back to back yeah. home runs and then you get drilled. Pretty suspicious. Yeah. Brandon Hyde yeah. trying to be a peacemaker. Here come the bullpen guys. Not much happening, just some back and forth. Well, and the only reason you're out here is because you got a young pitcher that, tell you what, it, you threw them. You know, yeah. the major league hitters are getting paid to hit home runs. If you're going to be bad, if you're going to throw balls down the middle, two skippers yelling at each other. Montoya and Hyde having words. Look at Brandon Hyde. He's he's agitated. Well, one of his guys just got yep. drilled. Now, and, and there's no way that Charlie Montoya can defend this because if you're managing a young team like he is, you don't want your guys getting thrown out after they hit a home run. Yeah. So, well, what did Earl I was say? We didn't want to get involved in this. Our guys are better than their guys, right? Well, and it's yeah. not the case here. It's just yeah. a young pitcher that lost his cool because it's it's. You, it's well, Jim, what I didn't like, Fran Franco kind of froze at the plate and stared out, and Manaya came charging toward the plate. Like, well, let's yeah, go. well, like yeah. you know, like I didn't mean to do that. Come yeah. On. Whether you did or not, you did. But you start so hitting cold at everybody that hit home runs. I never understood why the bullpen just didn't have a fight out in left field. You know, they have to in, run right? all the way into. <laughs> Let's just meet out in center field and save, but, save the space. I mean, if you think at age 23 that you're just going to drill guys when you make mistakes and hitters hit home runs. Now the umpires are meeting Jim, and yeah. that conversation is: Are they going to issue warnings? Well, right? there should be a yeah. warning, but you know that. But do they go is, both ways? Well, it does. <laughs> and that. Michael Franco has been, has has been around the block long enough to know and when guys are taking batting practice. I think you know, McGuire did his thing. He, he checks the hitter. He's not going out. He looked. But meanwhile, Manaya was coming down the mound like he had business to do. Yeah. Yeah. The peacekeeper. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hard to hold 26 of them back though. Yeah. No, well, he doesn't want anybody to yeah, get no, a suspension right or whatever. So I don't, well, I don't think they threw him out because you can you can never. Oh, oh yeah, maybe he's, they did. He's been ejected. Well, I don't like this either. Yeah, you but can't read minds. You can. You, uh, yeah. He's gone. Now, did it happen? Was it the pitch or something after? Nope. I think they just thought that he threw at him. So not only does he get thrown out, he's actually going to get suspended because of that. That's just the way the league rules are. But you know, again, Alec, you hit him, and it looked pretty obvious. So, well, it's also suspicious when two guys just took you out too, and then the next guy gets drilled. Wait just a second. This is pissing me off. Listen to what's playing in the background. Inning started uh, quiet enough with Trey Mancini walked and then a strikeout from San. Hey Siri, please don't let this be true. Name that tune. This sounds like Mad World by Gil Ember. 
I know this is a baseball analysis video, but forgive me while I go on a rant. If what Siri just suggested is accurate, this is despicable. No professional organization with a multi-million, tens of millions of dollars in payroll should play such instrumental recordings in lieu of hiring a live musician to perform similar works, especially without the knowledge or consent of the artist when said artist previously stated not to use their music in that way. I play for the fans. I produce and record for the fans. That's the only reason I do it. And if Siri, what Siri suggested is true, it perpetuates the starving artist archetype and makes our members' lives that more, more difficult. I connect with a fan, not a corporate schlub. If a team wants an organist, they should hire an organist, period. End of discussion. Don't be cheap. Such alleged conduct only discourages artists from making music for their fans, knowing that our future career prospects and income potential are in jeopardy. This is our livelihood. Don't un do not do this to us. Hire and pay your artists a living wage that's fair. Did this happen? Does anyone know? I'd, I'd really like to know. Major League Baseball copyright claims nearly every video that I upload to Close Call Sports' YouTube channel. They get the ad revenue. I don't see a cent, even though I edit the video, I produce them, I upload them, we do the commentary, we do the analysis, we do the graphics, but MLB gets all of it. I guess that's fair because it's their original content. Wouldn't it be nice to treat lowly little musicians the same way? I wish that ASCAP and BMI were nicer to smaller operations. I digress. It feels unfair. Speaking of being unfair, the pitcher in this situation feels that this situation is unfair. Let's rewind the tape. We have two home runs back to back. The first pitch to the ensuing batter afterward is a hit by pitch up and in. Major League Baseball, if you don't know this already, put in a policy. This is not new for this year. This is COVID before. Umpires can't unilaterally throw the pitcher out or warn them right away. They have to get together as a crew first. But before that can happen, the bench is clear. I mean, Manoa... You know, his back was to us, so we couldn't see what his face looked like or what he was saying. The first visual thing to notice is the teams are separated. Blue Jays on the left, Orioles on the right. You want to separate both sides. It's always a good idea to do that because there's less likelihood of animosity that way. The bullpen's running in is just dumb because they have to use the same bullpen gate and they're not even involved in the original dispute, but Major League Baseball lets it happen, so here we are. But this is a rather routine baseball nothing meeting in the middle of the field until Charlie Montoyo says something and reignites the whole thing. And then the umpires actually do have to go to work. Underneath the baseball and it rode up to Franco. And I think Brandon Hyde saw that too because Hyde went in and said, hey, keep keep my guys away from him. Now it looks like somebody else is getting hot in there. It looks like some of the coaches are, are as angry as anybody and cooler heads are going to prevail and get everybody out of there hopefully before it escalates any further and now Charlie Montoyo's a little bit heated I think he's in conversation with Brandon Hyde his counterpart but again we don't know what Manoa's facial expression was or what it, what he is saying but as long as this game has been around if a pitcher starts walking in towards the plate people are going to take it the wrong way. So now that everything calms down, the umpires can get together and talk about the intentional pitch at batter rule. There are several outcomes. Number one, if they felt that the thing was intentional, they can either throw the pitcher out or the pitcher and the manager at the same time from the game. That's without warnings. Two, if they felt it was intentional, they can warn both sides that the next such event will result in an ejection of the manager and the pitcher. Three, if they felt it was not intentional, they can still warn both sides because you're allowed to warn at any time as, quote, circumstances warrant. And four, if they felt it wasn't intentional, they could actually do nothing. So the umpires get together and you take a bunch of circumstantial evidence into account. Pitcher just gave up back-to-back -back jacks. Look, if you don't do anything or you issue warnings, Baltimore will be unhappy. If you eject, Toronto will be unhappy. No one's going to win in this situation. The rule book says the higher and the upper the pitch is, closer to the head at least, it's supposed to get some action, an ejection usually. Not quite head high, but close. Look at the plate umpire. I want to spotlight Roberto Ortiz because I think this is very underrated. He goes around, gets in front of the batter, and puts his arm around him. You're going to say, umpires cannot touch batters. Players can't touch umpires. This is not an animosity and argument. This is a friendly, comforting touch. Different context and context is key. But keep following through here. He turns Franco toward the dugout, turns him away from the pitcher toward the dugout, and then points to the dugout as they're charging out. And guess what? Look at Franco. Did you see what he did? Franco, who was just super upset a few seconds ago, 
is now a peacemaker. He's trying to hold his dugout back. I think that's great game management. Very underestimated by the plate umpire in this situation. Can I copyright claim this video because my music is being used? And Manoa is saying, what's it for? So, so the pitcher's upset, what I do, why am I throwing out, you know, classic, what I do, what I do. But I think the broadcaster said it best earlier. The pitcher gave up back-to-back -back jacks, multiple home runs in the game. Next pitch, first pitch to the new batter, up and in, hits him. And then the pitcher starts doing a beeline, animated, confrontational posture toward home plate. You add all of that evidence together and you throw him out because it looks like an intentional pitch at batter violation. His delivery and missed where he wanted to throw the baseball. I don't think he was trying to hit him at all. And the umpires are saying that they thought he did and that's not right. Yeah, you don't see that call made all that often and Manoa has been ejected from the game in the eyes of the umpires for intentionally throwing at Michael Franco. So this one has gone sideways on the rookie and on the Blue Jays in a hurry. It is five to two Baltimore.